All right, all right. Hi, how are you, Jed? Doing good. How are you, Pat? I'm very good, guys. Everyone tuning in right now, welcome to the latest edition of Fresh Money, where you learn all things about Web3, Metaverse, NFTs, and of course, cryptocurrencies. This is Patrick Lau, your host, and this is my co-host, Jed Ignacio. Welcome again to another exciting Fresh Money episode. Medyo special tayo ngayon, no, Jed? Uh, we have a yeah. different format right now. Um, we're gonna make things a little bit more fun. Uh, we're gonna change things up a little bit. And for today's format, we have no special guest, but we do have a very special topic. And Jed, what is that topic? Yes, we recently launched nine new tokens in our mobile application. So Pat and I will discuss each of this one by one. And... um. Give our thoughts on each of these coins. Yeah. So for everyone listening, this is like a very exciting time, not just for the whole crypto market, but also specifically for PDAX, specifically for PDAX in our app and all of our users and potential users because we recently introduced nine new tokens. And we're going to dive deep into this. No? So everyone who is very curious uh, about all of these tokens and is it a good thing to invest in again not financial advice but we're gonna try our best to guide or ease you into what these tokens are all about and if they really would prove um something of use based on your own current investment objectives so before that jed i have a very very important question for you for today's episode why is the market down <laughs> for right, a right. few weeks it's been down uh i think Kind of get the feeling that uh, right after we did that episode webinar about Ethereum, the merge, and we were so bullish about it. And we even talked about, you know, how the merge would, you know, increase, drive up the valuation of Ethereum. Wala, biglang bumagsak lahat. What's happening? Like, uh, personally for me, I'm a long-term investor. I'm not that phased. This is like probably my my second or third bear market. But for all of the listeners right now, I'm sure everyone is wondering what the hell is happening. So do you have any idea, Jed? Yeah, so not financial advice, no? So the market is giving us another chance to accumulate these cryptocurrencies at a cheaper price. <laughs> but kidding aside, the reason why market went down is from a technical analysis standpoint. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum were approaching key resistance levels. I believe for Bitcoin, it was approaching 24.5k, but... Ultimately, it didn't have enough buyers in order to move past that level so and got rejected from 24.5. So I think people were really expecting that Bitcoin would go through, pass through that level and go all the way to 28 or 29K since after, once you get past that level, there's not much resistance from there. And for, while for Ethereum, it was approaching 2000 level, but I think if you remember during our webinar, yeah. um, there we were very excited that Ethereum might actually pass that level. But again, it's still a psychological resistance given that it's a whole number and ultimately it got rejected. But to look at it from a more fundamental standpoint or from a macroeconomic standpoint, I think the reason why the market went down is because back in July, the market was pricing in or was anticipating that the Fed would slow down or slow down the tightening of interest rates and tightening of monetary conditions. So people were thinking that maybe inflation has peaked. We've seen inflation data go down a bit. And maybe the Fed will try to slow down since they're already in the process of taming inflation. Given that when it was announced last July that the Fed would only increase the rates by 0.75 bips. And back then, I remember they were thinking about 100 bips um, interest rates. When the Fed announced that it was only 0.75, the market rallied. So they were really expecting that this could be the peak of inflation and the slowing down of um, tightening of monetary conditions. But however, last week, um, Jerome Powell had another um, conference wherein he stated that he would, there is no chance of a Fed pivot or meaning Fed would e start easing monetary conditions, meaning that they would lower interest rates and make the environment more favorable to risk assets such as stocks or even equity, such as equities and even cryptocurrencies. However, um, since he clearly stated that inflation is still the number one enemy, so they would still, the Fed is still 
hell bent on really trying to control inflation by taming the, by increasing interest rates. So that's why the entire market fell down. So that's what right. happened. But from a long term point of view, I don't think the fundamentals of cryptocurrencies really change. It's just that macro environment really suppressing any sort of rally that's happening in crypto right now. So so to summarize, uh, we reached resistance point and key resistance levels and number two the macro environment yes. thing Mostly macro. oh okay so that give, makes me more relieved i guess um for every for everyone listening basta you believe in crypto and there's you believe in the fundamentals then it's just a matter of holding i guess long term um i guess there's nothing fundamentally that is bearish in in crypto right now right jed Parang hindi naman specific pertaining to a token or a hack or some sort of, you know, a smart contract uh, breaking down, anything like that. No, it's really just right, yeah. the macro environment. All right. That is great to hear. Uh, uh, just saying hi pala no, to everyone listening. Marlon Saluntao, good afternoon too. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Um Medyo ibang format for those who are just tuning in right now. We're going to talk about uh, the nine new tokens that have recently launched on our platform. And then we're going to guide you through each one and what does it mean for your own investment portfolio. So everyone listening in, feel free, no? mag-comment lang kayo. Any questions you have, please do. Please just leave some in the comment box. And we will not wait until the end of the episode. We can just, you know, make things more free-flowing and discuss everything even as you say, even as you type your questions in. So, Jed, bro, um, let's get it on. Let's start the, I think you prepared a very nice deck for this. Yes, sir. So, the tokens that we listed recently, no, we listed nine new tokens and we can divide it into three separate categories. So, first, we have Stablecoin and Tokenized Gold. And under this category, we have Binance USD and Pax Gold. In the Metaverse side, we have the Central Land. And Sandbox, we also have the two step end tokens, GMT and GST. We have the native token of Gala Games and the social token of the Board Ape Yacht Club, which is the Ape Coin. And lastly, we have the Layer One token of in Algorand. Nice. You know, sobrang gusto ko to kasi kitang kita in one slide. There are so many metaverse tokens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, I, being the head of metaverse, I'm very excited. For these things. Uh, and I will actually do a deep dive. Special to sa mga I'll, We'll do a deep dive on GST, GMT. Something that is close to my heart. Because I am personally just a background. I am a, uh, I was a an early adopter in Step In. Which is yun nga, the fitness app. Move to earn. In other words, you jog, you earn money, you earn tokens. right? And then you can exchange it for fiat. Then you can earn uh, as you become healthy. So, major revolutionizing concept. But as mentioned, uh, we are still in the bear market, so valuations have compressed. No, so we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But Jed, all right, let's get it on. Let's start with the first token. All right, Binance USD or the stable coin of Binance. So, everyone listening, uh, this is very good news. No, for ev- all, especially for all the users in PDAX because. As we all know, ito ang nagpapatakbo ng uh, economy ng crypto, which is any sort of token that has stable value, right? So, I don't know with you, Jed, but I was around in 2017. Sobrang hirap. It's very hard to uh, have no sort of stable coin. Something that where you can park your money into while waiting for conditions to get better. Right? Oh, really? Something that was USDT and USDC at that time. Well, USDT, yes, but I was very much concerned about the uh, solvency backing, no? of yeah. the backing right. of USDT. But good, good point, yon. USD, USDC came around. Uh, I don't remember when, but I remember back then it was only one, one option for me. USDT. I think USDC came mm-hmm. out a little bit er, uh, later on. But I didn't want to put my money in USDT. Because, <laughs> uh, ano eh, diba? Parang background lang din to everyone listening. Maraming, so, ganito. So, a stable coin, 
there are many variations, very fla many flavors. But the very basic flavor is basically a collateralized one is to one backed stable coin. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Uh, take for example USDC or USDT. Uh, a issuing institution, isipin yung bank, the one that issues the USDT receives real money. And then for every real money that they receive, they issue out to the person depositing that real money, the USDT or USDC token. So parang you're just tokenizing or you're just digitizing something that is fiat in the real world. And what is interesting here is, siyempre, we don't really know what that, you know, that that issuer does once they receive the fiat, diba? So it's kind of like utang nila yon, no? To, to the people who who get the tokenized form. And sometimes Tether, institutions like Tether, they put it in other vehicles, diba? ini invest nila sa ibang bagay. That could have risks that is that could pose, you know, um, principal risk. It could be marked down. So you say, hindi naman siya one is to one. This is where, kumbaga, the, the dynamics of and the, the risk profiles of these different institutions um, present in terms of at least issuing stable coins. Now, in Binance USD, uh, what is very nice about Binance USD is, of course, it's also... It's one of the most dominant stable coins. Why? Because it's backed by, obviously, the largest crypto exchange in the whole world, which is Binance. Uh, it's pegged to the value of one dollar, and it's issued by Binance. And they partnered with Paxos in terms of issuing this out. All right. So, ang okay dito is it's backed by a very you know large institution. And number two, there are many uses for Binance USD, diba? Specifically, if you want. There are lots of GameFi projects or uh, Metaverse projects or NFT projects that require uh, some form of Binance USD uh, payments in their platforms. No? It could be BNB, which is their governance. Somewhat Think of it like an equity stake for BNB in, in, in the Binance ecosystem. But there's also BUSD, which is their stablecoin equivalent. No? So anything to add else here, Jed? Um, your thoughts. Yeah, I think it's good that we have a Binance USD, so it's an additional option for our users to on and off ramp to the ecosystem of BNB and even to other exchanges as well. Because I think personally, I use stable coins in order to transmit to other exchanges rather than like um, cheaper coins like XRP or BCH. I rather use stable coins. It's easily you can easily trade it with another pair in another exchange. I think that's one practical use case for um, BUSD, no? And yeah, like, as you mentioned earlier, we can use a stable coin to explore the world of BNB. And BNB, I think, has the second biggest ecosystem just behind Ethereum. So lots of exciting applications there. Yeah, actually, personally, Jed, I know a lot of organizations, even, you know, cross-border payments. Once you once you enter kasi the world of stable coins, and lalo na, since Binance USD Binance USD's native um, blockchain is the Binance Smart Chain, yep. um, and because it's it's living on Binance Smart Chain, the gas fees. So this is what we call transaction fees in the blockchain world, are much more reasonable. No, so we can we can talk more about like how it's less and least less decentralized. But you know, I think for the purposes of just transferring, pag practical kan tao, if you wanna transfer, you know, something that is fixed of value. Let's say you wanna set, you wanna pay your employees across the other side of the world in something that is fixed, and then you wanna escape the the fees, whether it's the usual remittance fees or the gas fees of uh like a more decentralized network like Ethereum. Then Binance USD has a huge use case for this. So yeah, right. I mean everyone who is like whether in the Binance ecosystem or wants to send something as a payment. Consider this as a good form of, as a reasonably good form of um, payment method, no? Uh, GMGA pala to our very own Sevi Loves Art. Sevi, thanks hello, for hello. tuning in. April and John C, the whole Aggregado family, thanks so much for tuning in to Fresh Money. As mentioned, very special episode right now. We're going to talk about all of the new tokens that are available on the PDAX app. So everyone, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put in our comments. 
in the comment section. Good afternoon, Christian Kaburian, our very our very own <laughs> okay. Buti na lang you got the memo, Christian. Uh for those wondering, it's a Tuesday, but we're we're on right now. Normally Monday, diba? but we had to move it because it was a holiday yesterday. But tune in for next week as well. Um, we're gonna be back to regular programming next week. All right. So on to the next um token, Jed. All right. The next one is Pax Gold. So Pax Gold is seen as a stable coin backed by gold reserves, which are stored and secured in the vaults of various banks. So the idea behind Pax Gold is that it makes trading and accessing gold much easier for the average person. Because, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, to invest in gold, you would have to go to ETFs or derivatives, which is not readily accessible for most of the people around the world. And right. investing the actual gold itself would require you to store it in the bank itself so that it carries storage costs and the hassle of finding a secure place to store that gold. So with Pax Gold, it makes it easier because you just have you just need an internet connection and a, a an app or a platform to trade cryptocurrencies as so you can invest in gold. So I think this is the idea of Pax Gold. It makes it really easier for trading and access. So with PaxG, you can actually redeem it for physical gold if you visit the if you visit the banks, you know. So and thesis behind investing in gold is that it's seen as an inflation hedge. So that's why a lot of people go to gold as a sort of safe haven asset because in times of economic turmoil, people would usually flock to gold as a safe reserve since it was traditionally believed that it would maintain its value at the very least. Although personally, I don't see how packs, how gold is an inflation hedge. If you look at the 10 year chart of gold, it's actually very stable to the point that inflation itself be um, beats you like inflation itself actually degrades your purchasing power if you hold on to gold. Yeah, uh, good about, point. Uh, uh, gold traditionally, yes, because it's seen as an inflation hedge. Yes, because you know the very the very basic definition is you want to avoid diluting being diluted in purchasing power into something that is you know increasing in quantity. And in our case, it's fiat, diba? It's pesos, it's dollars, because the Fed keeps printing money out of thin air. Dumadami yung supply. And if, and if basic economics, pag dumami yung number of things that is in the open market, it gets lowered in value, right? So in, and in purchasing power. Gold, traditionally, it's been a very good place to park your money. Why? Because hindi mo, it's not easy to, uh, to dig, to discover gold, to mine it to process it, and all of those things, right? You can't just with a snap of a finger create gold out of thin air. And historically, I think the inflation rate, Jed, of, uh, based on some readings I did, is that historically, the infl inflation rate is about 2 to 3%. Meaning, at any point in time, the number of gold that is out standing in the whole world every year just increases by maximum 2 to 3%. And if, mm -hmm. and if something increases like that very slowly, then... You know, there's the hope that it would retain its purchasing power. So at least, uh, I haven't checked the recent price of gold yet, but I think it's been stable, right, for the past few uh, years. Yeah, it's around one thousand seven hundred now. Yeah. So, and I think at 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 one point in time, it spiked up, pangay, eh, right? Yeah. So, uh, but it 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 um it stabilized in value later on. So Aljon Mencero, uh, GMGM. GM, Good afternoon to you, sir. Kalako P. Dax Gold. <laughs> soon, soon. No, joke lang, joke lang. There's not gonna be a P. Dax Gold. Um, maybe P. Dax Prime. So it's a service for mga for, high, for, for, for gold. <laughs> Parang yan yung, yan yung ano namin, yan yung gold VIP service namin. So anyone listening here wants to apply, you can just contact Jed because he's, he's part of the Prime division for P. Dax. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a question as well to Aljan. Paano po malalaman na safe yung crypto na hindi siya magagaya sa Luna na 99.9% .9 ng value niya ay naubos? Oh my God. So that's you. Uh, that's the one thing that is very special with crypto, Jed. Na kala mo tapos na lahat, kala mo bumagsak na siya ng 90%. But after going down 90%, it could go down even another 90%. That's From that, <laughs> this is what happened to Luna. Actually, Aljan, we were witness to that. No May, uh, I forgot the exact date, but 
Uh, and when it was May, I was looking at the charts and then biglang, oh, okay, 30 na lang si Luna, and then 3, and then 1, and then point zero zero something. No? So it's been a very traumatic experience for everyone who went through that experience. No? But um, that is like the exact right question that you could have. No? How do you know na safe ang crypto, right? So how do you know that you won't get or you want to if you want to avoid these situations, how do you make sure that that doesn't happen to you? So I guess, what's the answer, Jed? What's what? What are your thoughts there? Ooh, it's kind of tough, because usually I would say if there's a clear use case for um, the cryptocurrency, you know, like there's an actual use case, not just used for trading and investing. But Luna had an actual use case. To be honest, like people were using it to invest. People were using the different protocols. People are use, taking advantage of Anchor. So I think it comes down to not just the use case, but also the tokenomics of the cryptocurrency. So Aljun, if you're not familiar with what tokenomics is, this is basically the economic design of the cryptocurrency or the supply and demand dynamics of the cryptocurrency. Like how much supply is being emitted, what's the point, what's the use of the coin, what's the utility. So I think you have to take those into account when assessing whether or not if this crypto is safe. How about you, Pat? So, uh, for me, thanks, Jed. That was a great, a great answer. For me, Aljon, simple lang din yan, no? So, the way I like to view it is, uh, Aljon, is parang don't invest into, into the things that you don't understand. But if you want yes. to gain higher, you know, higher beta, uh, and sorry, not beta, but also gain alpha no, in the market, um, you have to put the work in, no? So, putting the work in means doing your research, no? So, Two things, two trade-offs lang yan. Kung wala kang oras masyado, but you want some exposure into this exciting asset class, then just stick to the blue chips. Diba? Stick to the proven things with the understanding that hindi pa rin siya 100%. Because the asset class in itself is also very risky. Diba? So um, when I tell you that the blue chip is Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, that's a blue chip right now. And also, relatively speaking, to the, all the other coins. But syempre, you have to understand, crypto as a part or percentage of our portfolio still represents a, a more risky risky um, proposition. Diba? At the same time, it's two-sided coin. Diba? More risk, more return. Volatile siya, but it could go volatile down, but volatile up. Diba? And it's and masaya. Diba? Party time tayo to the moon if it's going up, but then if it's going down, you take the risk. right? So, two things. If you don't have time, stick to the more blue chip. Understanding that you know, blue chip is something relatively speaking. Number two, pag gusto mo tal- if you really want to chase, you know, you want to be the, uh, you want to gain like the 100 X's, the 1,000 X's, you really have to put in the work. And what does that mean? If ikaw yung nag-invest sa Luna, you have to know how it works. As in, loob-loob yan, balik ta rin mo pa, alam mo kung paano gumagana ang Luna, paano gumagana yung arbitrage system nila. Paano ang nagre-relate si Luna sa UST? Paano nagmi-mint ang UST from burning Luna? And malalaman mo na yan na it's all good at the onset, but if everything is has high demand for UST, pero the same is true going backwards, no? Which is that, you know, people, kung gusto, ayaw na nilang, kung, if they want to exit UST, whenever they sell it, kabalik taran the dami na may supply na luna no so these things i don't want to go into the you know deeper deeper details because it has something to do with also related din yan aljan sa stable coins no many types of stable coins luna is actually just another iteration of the stable coin system which is tawag natin algorithmic stable coin wala siyang backing wala collateral it's just through game theory through smart contracts through arbitrage na nababalance sila together. And as we know, syempre, this is more on the wild, wild west frontier side of things and has more risks, right? So again, to summarize, paano malalaman na hindi magagaya ng Luna 99.9%? I wish I could tell you the answer, but then again, if we all know the answer, then we would all be rich. So no one really knows what will happen. The best thing you can you can do to reduce your risk, do your homework. Now, if you can't, if you don't have time to do it, then just stick to the blue chips. Well said. Well said. All right. Next uh, token, sir. Sandbox. Ayos. All right. Sandbox. But before that, uh, Christian Kaborian, our very good 
our very uh, loyal listener is asking, what are your mistakes in trades or how do you avoid them from happening again? Good question. <laughs> I think this is something that better answered by you know people who are Christian who are you know better traders than me. Uh, then again, you know, person speaking personally, I'm more of a fundamental guy. I hold things longer term. But having said that, no, um, share ko lang din the things that I've you know really regret that I always remember, Christian, is really not the mistakes that. Uh, where I went into a token and then lost lots of money. It's actually you mistakes that where I went into the token, put in a you know reasonable amount of pesos, and then I sold too early. Because and actually, which is a good segue, one of those tokens that talagang nare regret ko is really Luna. Because I was in Luna Christian nung last year January January 2021. And I was reading yeah, the white sense. paper, <laughs> and I was um I don't know Jed, do, um were you were you familiar with Luna nung time na yun, in January? Last I was familiar on mga March, but I had some doubts, so I didn't buy it right away. I bought after the May crash. Eh. Ayo, so first time mo na na bili yung Luna after the May crash. Yeah, I had some doubts. Solid. Um, ako naman Christian, I came in early. I did my homework. Interesting. Nilagay ko yung konting portfolio ko. Percent lang, hindi naman lahat. Para to manage risk. No? I came in at around $1.68 per Luna. Oof. And as you know, as you know, um, by the end of the year, naging 100 plus si Luna. Di ba? 120 or something. So, almost my ano, that could have been my almost 100x. Di ba? So, and it could have been like parang life-changing money for me. But then again, I exited at 10x. No? 10 times my money, okay naman, but you know, it's not life-changing by any measure of degree. So Christian, to summarize, <laughs> yeah, it's still good. It's still good. But to summarize, my point of view is parang, think of it like kind of like a, you know, a VC model na, you know, only in crypto can you realize these gains, but you have to manage your risk, diba? And, uh, And the mistakes that I've made in terms of losing money, I don't. It doesn't affect me so much. Is it because of my the psychology of my thinking? I don't know, but I don't even remember to be honest. The mga trades na nalugi ako. I just remember the trades where I sold too early. No, so <laughs> yun lang. Um, that's my own personal experience. How about you, Jed? Yeah, for me, it's more on the risk management side. So learning to cut your. Because I'm to share some context. I do. Both crypto uh, fundamental technical analysis, but more heavily weighted on the fundamental analysis side. So technicals more on the entry and enter and exit. But I really usually play in longer time horizon, and I don't day trade. So uh, I'm not really good at that I'm trading small time frames. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, for me it's risk management because I have to lear- learn how to take the loss when I'm wrong, and also taking profit, some profit when, um. When I already made enough money, so sometimes it ends up round tripping for some of my trades or some of my investments. So saying that means gains, and also learning how to manage my risks. Because if you don't manage your risks, the market will manage it for you. So it's important that you know how to not only cut your losses but properly size it according to your risk tolerance, depending on the coin. So if it's a really small cap coin, you have to allocate a smaller portion of your portfolio since that is. Essentially, more risky. Nice, well said, sir. Uh, one thing to avoid after hearing what you said, Jed, the risk of ruin. No, so the risk that don't ever put yourself in a position where you could actually be zero, could lose it all. Because by that time, wala, wala ka na magagawa. It's game over na for you. Anyway, um, more questions. Thank you guys for for tuning in again. But before we answer questions, let's move into sandbox. Again, Sandbox, we have listed this token on our platform. You can trade it, you can buy it. And it's also very exciting because this is the uh, utility token, the native token for Sandbox, which is a virtual world. For those who are not familiar, this is the platform where you know all of the famous celebrities, like Snoop Dogg, uh, even Binance have a plot here. Just as an aside, Jed, I almost bought my own you know uh, estate in sandbox way back last year then but you know oh. i had i had to 
I had to stop myself from being too much of a DJ. Kasi ko hindi, like, malulugi ako sobra. But, um, very interesting because Sandbox is a metaverse platform. Think of it like, kind of like a, diba, if you want to simplify things, it's kind of like simply a uh, Minecraft, yeah, Minecraft for, for Web3. Ganun lang. And even, it even looks actually nicer than Minecraft. No? So, lots of promising and exciting things because how they do it is they lease out or they sell plots of their land to various partners. And, they, and these partners are, you know, Snoop Dogg, Binance, uh, you know, I think YGZ even has plots. There's so many other, you know, partners that they have na sobrang like kilala. And once they have these lands, they develop it just like any other land. They develop either into their own, you know, a museum, their own art, NFT gallery, or even their own game. No, So even here in this in the slide, you can see Walking Dead. Uh, a Walking Dead um, themed game inside Sandbox. And Sandbox is very exciting because um, actually, to tell you the truth, out of all of the Metaverse plays, sila lang ang pinakamaraming partnerships. So bang galing ng BD and partnerships team nila, I would like to learn tips from them because they all of the biggest brands from Web2 have gone into Sandbox. And Sandbox is used to buy the things that are being sold, the virtual goods inside this platform. For example, if you want to play The Walking Dead, you probably need, you know, guns. You probably need, you need to 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 equip your character with certain equipment, vests or whatever, no, any wearables, and maybe uh, health potions and all these things. These assets are denominated in sand in S A N D. Secondly, you can use sand for staking. You can use sand for governance, meaning you have to you can vote to influence the future direction of the project. And lastly, of course, the medium of exchange, meaning you can buy stuff with it, uh, digital assets on Sandbox. So again, uh, for those who are very excited about this project, this Metaverse project, we have listed it already in PDAX app. Go ahead and check it out. Anything to add, Jed? Yeah, not much. Uh, like what you, I agree with most of your points, and I think Sandbox is one of the more interesting ones among the metaverse platforms, no? Since um, it's not just a shared virtual world, but it actually has various games. So it's like what we mentioned earlier. It's very similar to the likes of Minecraft and Roblox, wherein each land has its own kind of experience, own kind of game. So I think it makes it very unique and exciting. So it leads to like different or in even infinite possibilities of what Sandbox can be. Hence, the name of Sandbox. <laughs> All right. Next uh, token, please. All right. Next token is the Central Land. So similar to Sandbox, this is also a metaverse virtual platform. But I think the difference is this one is not really more catered towards games. It's more of like a virtual reality game wherein you have avatars and you can go to different virtual places, explore the virtual world of the central land. So this in this world, users can buy parcels of land and they can use this later to build or navigate different things on it. So you can build like casinos, museums, um, buildings, etc. And mana is used to purchase lots of land and cosmetics for a user's avatar. So Pat, what are your thoughts on the central land? Um, Decentraland, it's another virtual world. If you notice, medyo iba yung, uh, yung aesthetics niya. It's uh, less of a blockish type, more of, you know, uh, more graphic -y, I would uh, define it as that. And same type of um, concept, they sell lands and then you can develop it into different things, right? So, uh, by the way, wow, we have someone... On the chat right now, our very own Meg Amat. Miss Meg, how are you doing? Meg. Digitex, I love your, I love your profile pic. Uh, it's uh, I love that meme, and uh, actually, it's very apt for what's happening right now in the crypto markets. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming internally, but anyway, Digitex. So why, why, why is our very own? So so for for those tuning in, Miss Meg Amat is our very own head of NFT in the metaverse division and one of our more exciting projects in the metaverse this is a great time to plug it and thanks for reminding us is digitex digitex is 
kind of like uh, the very first metaverse experience, Jed, in partnership. P- so PDAX have, has already partnered with uh, none other than De La Salle University, um, DLSU, because they are now uh, they are now uh, ha- celebrating the first batch of graduates for their game development course. So imagine what the very first you know um, game gaming course, game development course that they have, it's going to be uh, the first batch will be graduating this year. And it is more than fitting for them to have kind of like a parang a going out party, a capstone event, which will be held in the central land. And this is what Digitex is all about. So during this period, I think which will happen, which will span maybe a week or maybe three, three to five days, people can enter the central land, visit uh, we actually built Jed our very own PDAX building there. So yeah, it looks really cool. Looks Sayang, cool. Uh, I should have, uh, my bad, I should have gotten Meg here. Uh, Meg, if you're here, uh, maybe you can join us <laughs> and you can share screen with, with what Digitex is all about. <laughs> I'm going to chat you in a little bit. But um, just to summarize, we have a PDAX building there, we have a De La Salle building there, and all of the game development graduates will also present their projects inside the central land in addition to that we will have sets of talks no we have we've partnered with metaverse experts and ygg alerts uh will be organizing the whole thing into a series of digital you know zoom or or you know we could have the talk also in the central land itself talks about the metaverse what does it mean for everyone here um, how do you even uh, create mana? You have to create mana accounts, decentraland accounts, and we can. F- uh, we will be talking about you know very important topics like you know smart contract and its and its uh, implications on the law, and you know game development in the Web three world, game five NFTs, and all of those things. So please, um, please uh, stay updated on our Facebook uh, channel, our Twitter. You can follow me and Jed as well for more info on this. Digitex will happen September in this in the later part of September. We're gonna if we're gonna if we have to, some time the latter part of the show we're gonna bring in Meg as well. So that there you go um, for the Central Land. All right. So next is Gala Games. So Gala Games aims to have a robust gaming ecosystem and using the power of blockchain technology to empower its users. So as you can see in the pictures in the left, right-hand side, we have around 14 games right now in the Gala ecosystem, ranging from various um, gaming genres. We have something like tower defense, a role-playing game, and survival games, and something similar to Farmville called Townstar. So with Gala games, users are able to own the in-game assets through NFTs and have influence on the direction of a game through governance. And what they can use as governance is the native token in Gala. This not just use of governance, but it also be used for in-game currency and rewards for node operators. So personally, I think Gala is interesting because it's developing a ecosystem of games and taking advantage of blockchain to empower its users to really put into to really emphasize on the ownership aspect of games. Since I think not many of you know that. The assets you have in your in the traditional games or web web two games, um, are isn't something really yours. You can transport it to different to other, um, games. While in Gala, I think that's possible here, and it's really exciting to see what they can develop as in their ecosystem. Yeah, I, I I know Gala. I don't. To be honest, I don't. I'm not so much in depth in the Gala ecosystem, but I do know lots of um Pinoy's. Our very own Filipinos, there's a strong community in Gala. So I've uh, so anyone here listening, if you guys know anyone from the Gala community, uh, Philippine community, do reach out to us. We would love to also partner with you on some sort of you know partnership or collaboration to further promote the Gala token. We would love to speak to you. So yeah, that's it. Um, another metaverse token that is very exciting. Um, Let's. I think this is a good time, Jed, to also answer a little bit more of the questions. Uh, so, what uh, from John Ray Oviedo Escoto? 
what utility of NFT do you think has a great advantage to survive until mass adoption? Nako, that is a very hard question. <laughs> um, Jan, so you, uh, NFTs, basic lang, no? An NFT can be anything, literally anything, no? Because NFT is a very all-encompassing word. It's simply just any digital object that has value, that is scarce, that cannot be forged or copied. Because of blockchain technology. And from there, it's just a token. It could be any digital object. It could be a JPEG. It could be a, you know, a video file. It could be a GIF or any digital object that is scarce and therefore has value. So now, utility is something that you put on, on top of that. No? On top of that digital object. And it could be you know, utility of the NFT, for example, that you use for a game. For example, Axie is a... It's an NFT asset. It's technically an NFT, and its utility is you need to use it for uh, to be able to play the Axie game. Uh, there are different types of utilities, and I think the answer here is really it highly depends on the project and the sustainability of it. No, so it, there's no um, I guess uh, there's no easy answer to this. I guess what I would say is utility. I think that. You know, one of the biggest problems of NFTs is bridging the gap of utility because blockchains are just, you know, digital systems. It's very hard to cross that barrier into the physical world. Diba? And that's a very big problem. But whoever solves it problem, meaning, you know, it would be good if an NFT has utility in the physical world. Right, Jed? For example, you mm-hmm. have an NFT and you can maybe claim free something, or free merch from your favorite brand, that would have value, right? That would have um, a more, you know, lasting, non-speculative value that will survive because now it all depends also on the brand itself, diba? And that's one of the, I guess, biggest problems that we are facing, diba? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. it. It's really facing the problem of how do you provide utility that would cross that barrier into the physical world? And I think, uh, actually... We have Meg already in, in the chat. Meg, we will just go through the other tokens very quickly. But, you know, please prepare your 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 thoughts as well, your mega insights on on uh, the metaverse. Um, sorry, we're, we're a bit grabe. I didn't know that we could actually finish one whole hour, Jed. Just us two, no? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's good and also bad, Mejo. I think we're probably a bit too talkative, or maybe it's just me. <laughs> Hi, Plato, uh, Boss Felix, Asuncion uh, of Tetrix. Welcome, sir. Welcome aboard okay. on Fresh Money. Thank you for always tuning in. Jed, let's move on to the next token. Next token, step in. All right. Uh, something close to my heart. Step in. I was an early adopter. Basic lang, you, you walk, you jog, or you run. And you earn tokens. No? So think of it as GST is similar to SLP. GMT is AXS. So GST is what you earn when you whenever you run. Simple as that. Um, at one point in time, so Mabog saw brain move to earn. And everyone has now been cloning this project. Mm-hmm. But it still stands to note that Stepin is still the OG. Stepin is the Axie, is the Axie equivalent of the move to earn movement. Uh, if you look at the charts, very obvious it's a crypto bear market. Bakyat, speculation din bumagsak. But, surprisingly, Jed, it, actually, GST is one of the more popular traded, when, ever since we launched last week, ha, it's one of the more popular traded tokens, popularly bought tokens out of all of the nine. Really? Yes. So far, surprising. And apparently, um, even, like, even though the token crashed. <laughs> even though the token crashed. And, um, you know, very, I'm, I was very surprised, but also pleased to find out. So I guess it's a, I guess it's evidence that there's a very strong uh, Filipino community and Filipino supporters in uh, Step In. And actually, I just wanted to shout out, you know, uh, to Sir Paolo, uh, uh, to Sir Paolo of Step In Philippines community. <clears throat> if you look at the, the poster above, um, there is one very exciting, you know, uh, community effort or event. 
that will happen, which is you know step in live event and meetup, and the very our very own step in core community uh, builders, which is Barn Dog, the guy in the middle of the that poster will be dropping by in the Philippines. So I'll take this time. I'm not, you know, um, just to just to preface this, I'm not a paid brand ambassador. <laughs> I don't even know the 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 main founders of Step In. I'm not getting paid for this, but I'm just a user, no. And again, not financial advice. I'm not asking anyone to buy Step In or GST. This is just for informational purposes only. But having said that, it the Step In PH meetup will happen. September 25 in Moa, and I think what what it will have what will happen there is 8 a.m. We're gonna they're gonna have a you know jog and maybe after have some breakfast. So everyone tuning in, please um, you know contact me if you're interested in joining, and we would love to have you. We uh, the step in community would I'm sure would love to have you there. Um, all right, next token, sir. Before we move on, I'm just curious, Pat, do you still use step in? Yes, so I still use it. Um, Shout out pala to Mitch YL right now who just um, commented step in on the chat. Mitch YL is also I I can uh, validate that is also an who's also an early adopter because and I know that because she's my wife. <laughs> so shout oh. out to, to to Mrs. Lau there. Um, so she uh, I I'm still I know I'm still running we're still running but not every day. But ang kagandahan dito step in is step in has kind of like allowed you to program. You know how how people always say, you know, habits are everything, diba? So mm -hmm. I, I just kind of view it as, you know, the tokens are just very, uh, just a bonus thing na lang. And what's more important is step in has allowed, you know, myself and my wife to build that habit of jogging, of running almost every day. And, you know, the, the health benefits are the real utility. And the coin itself to follow na lang and it's just a bonus. Of course, I'm just saying this because it's a bear market. <laughs> but it's a different thing when when the money was very was very big. But anyway, um, having said that, it's just a bonus thing, no. So and the health is the most important utility of all. So the right is not good na, no, as it was before. No, not at all. Uh, and actually, I I just shelf my my tokens. I don't even cash it out. I just you know accumulate it. <laughs> All right. So next one is Ape Coin. So Ape is the native token that empowers the community of the Board Ape Yacht Club or the Ape ecosystem. So this is a governance token that grants its holders access to the Ape Coin DAO, which is a community of Web3 builders. And token holders can also use Ape to purchase products, services, access to events, and services in the Ape ecosystem. So the Ape Coin is nice if you want to have some exposure on the growing brand and community of the ape ecosystem or the board ape yacht club since the floor price of board ape yacht club right now is crazy expensive i think this is one way to ride that wave of um the growing community of ape coin like recently they just launched a sort of metaverse concert with eminem and snoop dogg in the mtv awards so i think that really brought some awareness to the board ape yacht club community awesome so just I don't have anything else to add here. Just a short, you know, sentence. If you guys are bullish about the metaverse uh, and NFTs, the biggest blue chip asset right now, NFT collection PFP is Basie Board Ape Yacht Club. And since it's very expensive, well said, Jed. Ape can be seen as you know um, some you know a more fungible exposure to the upside of this project. All right, moving on. All right, for our last token is Algorand. So Algorand is a proof of stake ecosystem that offers highly customizable smart contracts, atomic transfers, and asset tokenization. It allows this network allows the process um a thousand transactions per, per second and aims to increase it to forty two thousand and currently has around forty two thousand four hundred plus dApps in its ecosystem. The native token algo is used for staking, governance, and as a medium of exchange in the Algorand network. So personally, I'm neutral on Algorand. Not too excited about it because I think it's lacking any uniqueness compared to its competitors such as Solana and Avalanche and Ethereum. So I think it's going to have a hard time getting some market share or user adoption. Since there is no attractive um, application at the very least to talk about what people say have 
what people say that while grant having an amazing technology so there's no application that i see that's taking advantage of this technology so i think that's the primary concern there and those are my thoughts about it what do you what do you think pat yeah i've heard about algo since a long time ago to be honest you know i'm i'm more familiar with in terms of the l1s i'm really more familiar with ethereum solana and maybe avax yeah. and luna Algorand uh, seems to me like a legit L1. Um, they have, you know, something. The, most of their value proposition is really, you know, most of the same thing: um, higher throughput, higher TPS transactions per per second. In terms of the ecosystem, n- to be honest, not too familiar with that. Um, but I do expect, and I agree with you, Jedno. Um, you know, L1s. You know, as Ethereum reaches the merge and achieves scalability through L2s, layer twos like Optimism and Arbitrum, the competition is on for uh, it's going to be even more intense uh, across the different L ones, and you have to have you know a more unique proposition. So, um, and of course, marketing as well. So everything is also about marketing. Um, the technology wise, I think it's pretty solid based on my you know, superficial view and research on them. But again, if you're a trader that is interested, lalo na, um, you know, the whole si- the whole bull and bear market goes through cycles of narratives naman, Jed, you know? At one point, it was all about um, alternative L1s, right? And then mm-hmm. this is where, you know, Solunavax just really increased in price. And then once Ethereum stabilized in price, there was the NFT boom. All of these things, and then there's the L2 boom. All of these things run through narratives. And if you're a trader, Algorand could actually pose as a good place to uh, do some research, do some study on technical analysis, and bet. Lalo na, lalo na if the narrative goes to alternative L once again, right? So, yun. John Ray of Viedo is caught a very nice discussions with different tokens. Thank you, sir, for... The compliment. I we really hope that you guys enjoy our current discussion on the tokens. And actually, to summarize, all of these nine tokens have their own place in the whole crypto ecosystem. And very exciting again. Once again, for the first time, these nine tokens are now available to trade and even to huddle on our PDAX mobile app. Now, Jed, I think um, we're at the last token. We have a very last minute special guest. Um right now and who's none other than meg amat of our uh head of our nft uh division in the metaverse hey meg how are you hey guys this is so last minute you guys are so funny (laughs) (laughs) that's how we roll in the metaverse we're the bad boys well yeah and girls (laughs) yeah bad bad boys and girls prepare your leather jacket meg we're gonna go to the next meetup in style (laughs) oh yeah Anyway, um, Meg, we're gonna allocate a more dedicated episode for you in the future, na, because I want to know more about you know where you're from. How do you get? How do you get into crypto? Why are you so? Why are you so passionate about NFTs? Right? This is and 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 you know eventually landed you a job as the head of NFTs in PDAX. No, so very curious journey. But before that, uh. We are preempting you. Um, let's talk about that very interesting metaverse event that we're going to have in September called Digitex. Uh, if you have some slides, feel free to share uh, in the screen. Sure. I don't know if I should uh, share this right away, but I guess in the spirit of Web3, when you just put your work out there, um, I'm going <laughs> to share um, this video. Wait, uh, so this is like um, work in progress of what, do you guys see this there? Yep. Of what the space will look like. So we're hosting it on Asiaverse land. We have access to 11 parcels of land. So that's pretty huge because um, one parcel of land, I think the lowest was, well, pre-bear market. I think it was like 1 million pesos or more um, for each land. So we um, kind of are lucky that um, we have friends in in high places. So um, 
I had my team build out um, this one. If you're from DLSC, you kind of recognize this. This is the Henry C. building or our interpretation of it. Um, this building is going to be where um, the seven capstone projects are going to be presented or basically we're going to turn the building into a booth. So it's at PDAX, we go big. So um, instead of just having booths, um, we're going to give um, the kids um, a whole building. And then um, in the Henry C. building or quote unquote Henry C. building, um, that's going to be where... Um, different projects of our um, friends or partners um, that's we're going to host them so it's going to feel like a, a museum kind of so um, you'll you'll get to learn um, all about these different projects that they have and of course um, the pdax building is there let me just scrub it I'm like so proud of this pdax building it's cute there um here so the pdax there. building the bird's logo. eye view is the PDAX logo. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And then um, okay. on each floor, there's going to be space um, to talk about our different products and services because we're coming up with really good stuff at PDAX. So it's not just the exchange. You guys have to um, look out, um, stay tuned then sa, ano, sa socials namin because we're coming up with really good stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's really a great alternative to um, to just hosting something on Zoom, I, I guess. Um, I mean, I love Zoom and like StreamYard, um, but you can consider Decentraland another alternative, um, something more interactive. I'm going to share one more, a couple more slides. Wait, huh? All right. You know how and um, while, you're, while you're bringing that up, Meg, when will it be? And how will people who are interested, how can they join uh, Digitech, G Digitex if, even if they just want to go to the central ad? Yeah, so um, see Digitex, man. it's on the central land. And as long as you have access to the link that we're going to share, um, most likely on our socials, um, you can hop right in. Um, it, it's best if you actually create an account, but actually... Um, there are some, there's a way for you to just enter without creating an account, but um, you get the most out of it if you connect your MetaMask wallet to it. Um, we're looking at um, also creating parent wearables. Um, if you want a PDAC shirt, for example, or a DLSU shirt um, in the central land, um, that might be something of interest. Oh yeah, and and by the way, we're gonna for those interested as well. We in PDAX we're planning to do something a promo that is very um, interesting. So I don't wanna I don't wanna jinx it, but it has to do with you know um, us providing with. Okay, yeah, I'll just stop at that. So it has something to do with the mana token. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a little bit too early for that, but. You know, always yeah. please stay tuned in our social channels because we're going to announce um, our special promo and you will enjoy it. And it will suffice to say it will allow you to enjoy the metaverse and enter the metaverse easily as well. Yeah, so the first video, it's kind of rough because uh, um, that's how you normally create spaces. It's either through Blender. So if you guys want to learn about Blender um, or any 3D software, so our preferred is actually SketchUp. But um, there are so many different um, 3D programs out there. And we're actually going to be teaching it. Uh, so um, I might be in a preempting that um, special segment with me in it. But basically, that's my background. Um, I've been creating um, spaces um, for different brands, including Samsung, Netflix, uh, Louis Vuitton. So th they're some of our clients. So um, we, we kind of have the expertise in really designing 3D spaces. Um, so when we're done, it's going to look and feel like this. It's like this. The other one because it was um, work in progress. Pa lang eh. But eventually, it's going to look like that. And what it's going to allow us to do in this space, um, we're going to have um, different stages where we can learn from different speakers, not just from us at PDAX, but um, some of our friends in the industry who were really well-versed um, with the nuances of the metaverse. Tapos, um, it's a 
we're also going to do like some sort of field trip of our favorite spaces um, in the central land because there's so many fun things to do in in the metaverse fun pero early um, but it, they're beautiful and you just get to learn like the different uses people have been coming up with so that's kind of fun um, we're gonna have a little bit of entertainment as well so um, we can actually stream there might be a DJ from streaming from Hong Kong so y- you might want to catch that because um, uh, that's the cool thing about the metaverse eh? Um, it's really connecting different people from different parts of the world. Whatever barriers that used to exist, um, they, they kind of are removed. So that's really cool. Um, you get to meet different people from all walks of life. And yeah, yung, ano, some rough idea about ano, the wearables that we're going to create. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Awesome. So excited, so pumped up about Digitex. Um, do you have the exact date, uh, Meg, of when this will happen so people can prepare? It's going to be uh, last week of September, but uh, we just need to confirm a few dates. Um, but definitely Perfect. watch out for our socials. Um, we're going to have right. more information there. Where can we uh, get more info or follow you, Meg? Do you have a Twitter uh, handle that they can they can follow you yeah um i'm on twitter it's meg underscore amat it's like my old old original og 2013 kind of twitter <laughs> <laughs> so yeah all right I, so, I post about like all of my and uh, my web3 musings and um fun stuff there anything nfts is there and um for all the listeners here right now meg is also a writer, diba? A writer yeah. on crypto as well and Web3. Where can they find your work? Um, I go straight for Forbes and E27. So, measure um, deep ish. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, anyway, um, Meg is like one of the deepest, like the people that I know that has the deepest knowledge on NFTs, the metaverse. And she is also my, I guess, my. Uh, sounding board whenever we have these wild ideas on NFTs. <laughs> More on that later on. Um, we're gonna schedule a whole episode about you know how how to really think about NFTs, what are they really, and what could the future hold? What are the obstacles? And we believe, we believe that of course, as mentioned, because we really love PDAX, PDAX has the the ultimate tool and the solution for all of this to allow for mass adoption for NFTs. But thank you again, Meg. Um, for everyone, please follow her on her socials, Meg underscore Amat on Twitter. Thanks so much for talking about Digitech. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Meg. All right. So I guess that's it, Jed. Um, very yeah. simple. Uh, brief background on every, every single token that we currently have. Very exciting stuff. And I would like to also add to all the listeners out there, stay tuned to, for even more, for even more new tokens that we will be listing. Uh, Jed, maybe let's um, answer some of the other questions that is um, currently here in the chat. Sure, sure. So which ones haven't been answered here? Here, from Marlon Saluntao. Hello, Sir Pat and Sir Jed. Philippine universities offer blockchain and cryptocurrency as a force. Sign up by ito of crypto mass adoption here in the Philippines. What do you think, Pat? Uh, okay. Offers boxing uh, sign. Uh, definitely, it's a good sign. But uh, Marlon, which which commu- which universities currently offer um, blockchain and crypto? I am super curious because um, I really I really believe that this is very important, right? Mm-hmm. So. On the very basic sense, diba, you get them while they're young. And um, obviously, because the young people are the future. And it's a very good sign that as, you know, the biggest problem lang naman in crypto is that education. Eh, diba? Education, what is it all about? What is the technology all about? What it enables? And the, there's no shortcut way to solve this, you know, this problem, this main blocker for mass adoption. Besides, Teaching, education, and um, the fact that Marlon, you know, 
universities are offering this as a course. Very good sign, very bullish sign for me. Uh, personally, I would love, I, actually, I'm not sure yet, though, but I don't know where you're from, but I'm from, I graduated from Ateneo. I would love if my own alma mater you know, also started to uh, introduce and talk about crypto and offer it as a course. That would be really awesome because really, Marlon, crypto is the future. Uh, believe me when I say it, um, crypto is the future, web is the future. How about you, Jed? Yeah, likewise. I believe my alma mater already has a representation in the central land. <laughs> but yeah, I agree that it's a good step forward that it's a sign that mass adoption will come here in the Philippines because universities are starting to embrace and accept it by offering these courses and educating the people here. I think mass adoption isn't here yet because there's still lots of misconceptions in the world of cryptocurrencies. And it's good that we have this course of more formal way of educating, a more formal and structured way of educating these people on what the true potential of cryptocurrencies are. Well said, well said. All right. To be honest, Marlon, I would, I'm looking forward to the future where there would be a full course and, you know, merong, merong pang, it would be nice if there's a smart contract development course or even uh, a whole ano eh, a whole parang bachelor of science in smart contract or even uh on the business side or more on the non-tech side maybe something about you know um, expertise in blockchain cryptocurrency so yeah I, i'm looking forward to that i think it's inevitable it's just a matter of time um any other questions that we have that uh that we might have missed uh huh? JV Pineda, what upcoming NFT projects are you looking at? JV, grabe, pa simple ka pa. You're just asking for <laughs> alpha, man. Um, welcome, welcome, pala to the show, JV. Um, for those listening, JV Pineda is from our very own PDAX. Um, and he's actually the guy that is all over the place. He's the one that is overseeing all of the you know, important projects in PDAX. So, JV, glad to have you on board. What NFT projects are you looking at? Huh, tough question. Before, uh, it was a variety of things because it was a bull market. Now that it's a bear market, I actually don't look at anything at all. Uh, medyo sad to say, but uh, I just look at, I just monitor, I would guess, the the blue chips and the semi-blue chips. So blue chip would be um, the basic CryptoPunk. And then the second tier, the way I think about it is RDFKT's Clonex clone xpfp project and of course my very own favorite azuki um and that's actually just the only thing that i'm monitoring right now as of for the new projects there there has been a sort of meta ongoing right now in nfts in terms of free mint projects right and uh i think the goblin town started it all and then after that lots of other projects followed not so sure if it's still as if it's still as effective and i think that as we head on to the merge, people will still value holding Ethereum more rather than putting their Ethereum onto NFT projects that might, you know, rug pull or that they're not um, confident in. Because, um, you know, let's face it, NFTs are a lot more risky than just holding native Ethereum. So I think going forward, JV, uh, we will see, you know, possibly flat NFT prices and then as we head on to the merge, everything stabilizes, then, you know, we will be more bullish on NFTs. Um, no doubt about that because NFTs are really a very empowering, life-changing technology. Uh, how about you, Jed? Yeah, I haven't really looked into NFTs in the bear market because I prioritize liquidity since with cryptocurrency, at least you can trade in and out. With NFTs, you kind of, if you buy one, you kind of stuck Yon. with it. Yeah. So it's not really ideal for the current market situation since I don't think there's any NFTs that's really going to pop off in terms of price action in the near future. So I think you're right, Pat. It's going to stabilize and it'll take some time before we can see the ridiculous gains that we saw in 2021. Yeah, I mean, while we're on the topic, uh, JV, I would love, like, if you know or anyone here listening knows any, you know, NFT expert nft dgen we would love to talk to him or her uh onto the onto fresh money i think it would be interesting to figure out 
or to talk to you know and figure out the men the i guess the the mental models that uh, an nft degenerator would use no and and the tools that they use um very interesting subset in the the whole crypto market but yeah thank you for for the uh for the question jv thank you guys for the alpha <laughs> we got the alpha bro but yeah you're welcome thank you for tuning in man so any other any other questions that we might have missed uh i think royce I, i'll just circle back one last question uh to to royce joshua and he's asking ngayon, ngayon na lang ulit haha what are the main utilities that sandbox, sandbox has that other platforms don't parang di kasi nakaka-assure puro celebs yung nagpo-promote hehe so actually good point yan no point. And, and you won't really survive crypto if you are uh kumbaga kung ututo ka lang no just because a, a celebrity comes in pasok ka na kagad that's a good point doesn't really mean to say that if Snoop Dogg comes in, Sandbox will go to the moon, right? Sand will go to the moon. So main utilities, I would say the main... So if you think about tokenomics, you just really have to think about what is the token used for? What is the use case for that token? Because that use case will drive the demand for that token. And if whatever the, if the demand is strong, people will buy it, price will go up, right? So very simple. Assuming, you know, Setters Paribus, um, the supply remains constant. No? Now, what is the main use of Sandbox? It Right now, Royce, it's simply to buy the digital assets, wearables, you know, gaming assets that is listed on every game that is developed in Sandbox. So if you believe, if you're bullish on Sandbox as a game, as a gaming platform, and if you think that in the future it will take off, many people will be onboarded as users, as players of different fat sandbox games, whether it be Snoop Dogg or anything else, then it makes sense. Right? It makes sense to be bullish on the sand token because then there will be use. There's really a clear use case and demand for that token. So I hope I answered your question, uh, Royce. But thank you again for, for asking that. Jed, if you have anything to add. Yeah, I believe you covered most of it. If I add, I'll add a bit more. I think what's interesting about Sandbox compared to its direct competitor in the center land is that it has games that are more interactive when it plays like an actual game compared to the experiences you have in the center land. So I think that's one of its edges compared to its competitor. No? And with that, I th as the name suggests, Sandbox can offer different types of experiences and can offer infinite possibilities. So it has an interesting future in um ahead. Yep. Awesome. All right. You know, I don't I, I can't believe it. Actually we lasted longer than Jed than a normal episode of ours where we have an actual guest. Uh, yeah same. Actually <laughs> thought this would be a short episode. <laughs> yeah actually lasted about the same with some guests. <laughs> before before you go man um I just like to share to everyone still here. Uh, every Thursday, we have the happy hour on PDAX, on our PDAX Discord. Um, we're, we're not going to have one this week. Bec we're just going to take a short break, but we're going to continue our happy hour next week. And normally, it, we have some very exciting prizes and games, uh, different types of entertainment as well, every Thursday uh, on our PDAX Discord. So, guys... Please, please uh, join us. Um, there's a QR code below in the graphic below. You can scan that to join our PDAX Discord and tune in every Thursday. We also have special guests. So it's going to be very fun because we provide also prizes as well, Jed. No? Prizes in crypto, mm -hmm. prizes in, in, uh, in pesos, in games where you can earn prizes in crypto as well. So please tune in. We have once in a while special guests that we can talk to we have djs we uh, we have listening nights we even had a k-pop listening night a few weeks back that was very fun we do games as well um quizzes please join our pdax community because i'm gonna say it right now and this is gonna be an alpha leak more will come all right more will come and the most shall i say uh the most 
active and loyal community members in PDAX, in the PDAX Discord, will also uh, benefit from something. If, I, if I'm going to have to word it um, carefully. So stay tuned for the album. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's gonna be fun um, stay tuned um, and uh, we, we really appreciate your support uh, in the community Jed anything else we have to add before we we, uh, we say goodbye to everyone right before we wrap up let's reward those people who asked the thoughtful questions as usual so to one of our regulars Aljun Bencero you can take a screenshot of this stream and or webinar and send it to our Facebook page to claim your reward of 300 pesos worth of crypto. And to Christian Kaburian as well, being one of the people who I think is already in perfect attendance with all our episodes. So Christian, you can claim your weekly reward of 300 pesos worth of crypto by taking a screenshot of the stream and sending it to our Facebook page. God bless, Christian. I think we're going to have to I know, pare. We're gonna have to provide like a special perfect attendance prize for, we for Christian. And but thank you, Christian. <laughs> All right, to our last winners, John Ray Escoto. So I, I, I believe you're new to this podcast, and thank you for joining and asking this question. So to claim your reward of 300 pesos worth of crypto, you just have to take a screenshot of this stream and send it to our Facebook page. Make sure it's the one with the blue check mark. All right. Uh, before we go, guys, um, I'm seeing another question. Let's just answer it quickly by Ilde Abuyen. Yung Solana at Polkadot, pwede na po ba yun sa PHP kasi naka-PHPT? So, Ilde, um, uh, we we recognize may mga ibang tokens talaga that are in PHPT pairs. So, right now, it's still Solana and Polkadot will still be in PHPT. Ngayon, what you can do, Ilde, is actually convert that PHPT into peso. So there is um, a trading pair in the mobile app, if you're on the mobile app, uh, PHP slash PHPT. Tama, no, Jed? Um, yep. Where, uh, let's say, nagbenta ka na ng Solana, you get PHPT, you can convert it to PHP. Easy as that, one is to one, it's just an extra step, but if you really want to get your PHP, then, you know, um, it's very, it's still very fast and convenient. Just a click of a button. So yeah, hope you, I hope you answered your question. Um, thank you, Jed, for another chill, for a more chill episode. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so looking forward to um, going, going again back to our regular programming next week, Monday. So guys, stay tuned. Again, September five, we're back to our regular show. Uh, Monday, that's Monday next week, uh, five p.m. All right. Thank you as well, Pat. Great chatting with you and looking forward to our next episodes. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Bye. Catch you next week. Bye-bye. Cheers.